Hello, my name is Liza Evely and I'm here today with Roger Berry from Complete Weight Loss Surgery. Roger's here to tell us the preferred options for weight loss surgery. Hello Roger. Hi Liza, how are you? Very well. Could you tell us a bit about your background? Sure. I'm a general surgeon in Melbourne and have been practising in private and public practice for about 10 years now. I started out uh, doing uh, liver transplant operations at the Austin Hospital and in that time developed an interest in bariatric procedures. I, um, over the last two years, have trained in bariatric surgery and perform almost exclusively uh, the lap band operation as my preferred operation. And what is a lap band? A lap band's a, a, a band that's placed around the neck of the stomach. Could you take that stomach mm -hmm, for me, Liza? Sure. Thanks. The band comes in two components. It has a port and attaching tubing that's connected to the band itself. The band sits snugly around the neck of the stomach like that. It's buckled up. Uh, if I can get it in. And just sits tightly around the top of the stomach like that. We then bring the tubing to the surface and connect it to this port which sits on the patient's abdominal wall. The band around the top of the stomach creates a small pouch that food enters into. Only a small amount of food can be taken into that pouch and then it's slowly released through into the normal part of the stomach by the band. We can adjust the opening around the stomach by filling or taking fluid from the port. So the patient fill, eats normal food, it fills quickly so they can only eat a small volume and empty slowly so they feel satisfied for long periods of time and are rarely hungry. If we need to make adjustments, we just access this port in the rooms and put small volumes of fluid in or out through that. And Roger, can you tell me what type of patients are suited to a lap band? There are two groups of patients that are suitable for lap band and we use a, a ratio of height and weight called the body mass index uh, to, to assess whether patients are suitable. The body mass index is a relationship between the patient's body weight and their height. We can measure it every time they come along to the rooms, place that in the computer and through an equation work out their BMI. Patients with a BMI of 35 or more that have disease, diseases associated with obesity qualify for a lap band. And patients that have a BMI over 40 already without any other disease are certainly suitable for a lap band operation. Does the operation require a stay in hospital? Sure. The operation is minimally invasive. It's a procedure done laparoscopically under general anaesthetic. There are about five small incisions in the abdominal wall. The operation takes somewhere between 45 and 90 minutes to perform. The patients usually stay in hospital one or two nights after the surgery and they're discharged home quite well after that. And how long is it until I can go back to work? Yeah, usually I ask patients to have between 5 and 10 days off post-operatively. We do the operation early in the week. By the weekend they're usually feeling pretty good and close to back to normal and the following week they resume their normal activities and normal work. And so does that mean I can get back to normal eating? No, and the band restricts the, the food around the top of the stomach. In the first two weeks after the operation, the patient can only have a liquid diet. They can't eat solid foods at all. And we gauge liquid by whether the, the solution or liquid will come up through a straw. They're seen at around the two-week mark by myself and the dietitian, and in that time they're advised on a transitional diet from liquids through to solids. So would there be any restrictions then on me leading an active life? There are no restrictions with the band. The uh, band itself is placed around the stomach internally. The port sits on the abdominal wall externally. That can be uh, uh, palpated or felt by the patient as they lose weight, but it doesn't restrict their lives in any way. And how often will I need to see you after the operation? Yeah, initially it's quite a bit. Getting the adjustments right, making sure that there's enough fluid in the band, that there's steady weight loss, no feeling of, of hunger, all of that takes a little bit of time. The adjustments in the first 6 to 12 months will be you know, maybe 4, 6, 8 times. But in time, uh, long term, we'd see patients once or twice a year. Could I get it done in the public system? Yes, it's possible. P 
Patients that don't have health insurance, there are three options for them. One is to go on a waiting list in the public sector. So usually that means they have to be assessed by the physicians in the public sector, uh, undergo medical therapy, and then uh, transfer to the surgeons. All of that takes time, and it can be a number of years before an, a band operation is performed in the public sector. The other two options are to self-fund, which is an expensive option for patients, or the other is to defer the surgery after engaging uh, private health insurance and waiting for that to mature. Okay, and so what kind of costs then would I be looking at? Not all the costs are covered by uh, health, the, the Medicare or the health funds, and there's a, an approximate $4,500 out-of-pocket expense for this procedure. Oh. And which hospital would I expect to go to? We operate uh, from three centres privately. Uh, St John of God in Berwick has been our main focus in the first 12 months. We're about to expand into uh, Cabrini Brighton, and we've always operated at Cabrini Malvern. Great, OK. Um, and Roger, how would I go about getting more information? Yeah, that's easy. You could visit our website, www.cwls.com.au or contact the rooms on 1300 00 CWLS. Terrific. OK, that's great. Roger, thank you very much for talking with us Thanks, today. Thanks, Liza.